dear students in earlier discussions we have talked about the pest different kinds of insect pests different types of damage caused by the insect pests and today we would start with the methods dealing with the control of insects and insect management once we know that an insect has attained a pest status and when we define the pest we say that an insect population crosses the economic threshold re reaching to the economic injury level and causing economic loss then the insect becomes a pest and as and when the insect becomes a pest it is necessary that when it is just to cross that threshold it is high time that some strategy needs to be employed so that the insect pest population is kept under check so that the population doesn't cross that limit and cause economic injury and result in economic loss that is what the uh, mankind or the farmer is concerned with so uh, there are various methods which have been used and employed for the management of insect pests or we can say for the control of insect pests to start with uh, number one method is the physical method of insect pest control now physical controls can be classified as passive that means use of trenches fences organic mulch particle films inner dusts and oils and active that is using polishing pneumatic impact and thermal and some other miscellaneous ones that is use of cold storage heated air flaming hot water immersion and so on some physical methods such as oils have been used successfully for pre harvest treatments for decades another recently developed method for pre harvest situation is particle film consequently several physical control methods are used in post harvest situations two noteworthy examples are the entulator an impacting machine used to crush all insect stages in flow and hot water immersion of mangoes used to kill tefritid fruit fly immatures in fruit in physical control methods the physical environment of the pest is modified in such a way that the insects no longer pose a threat to the agricultural crop this can be achieved by generating stress levels ranging from agitation to death or by using devices such as physical barriers that protect produce or plants from infestation physical control methods are grouped under two main classes as already discussed that is passive and active and a smaller miscellaneous category those that do not readily fit under passive or active or that is this classification passive methods physical barriers may be defined as any living or non living material used to restrict movements or to delineate a space it is easier to protect a stored product than a crop grown over large field areas now if you are employing a physical method definitely in smaller areas or in the storehouses because it's a small area uh, we can try to restrict the movements rather than uh, for a crop which is grown in a large field area in the field one major challenge is to deploy either degradable or non degradable barriers that can be dismantled and possibly reused at low cost so cost is one major factor for any method employed trenches trenches to intercept walking insects such as the chinch bug were implemented as early as 1895 the efficiency of the method depends on the density of the overwintered beetles and on the proportion of flying versus walking individuals 
as well as on physical characteristics of the trenches. Now trenches are space, uh, spaces uh, uh, digged around the uh, fields, cropping fields. The furrow should be at least 25 cm deep with sides sloping at angles about 45 degree plus minus little bit maybe. Adults that fall in the trenches in Hindi we would term as khai. Covered with dust have little chance of escaping because they cannot walk up the dusty walls and because they rarely fly before walking up to the top of plants or such structures. Fences. Fencing is particularly relevant to exclude low-flying insects from annual crops where few chemicals are available and the crop value is high. For example, the onion and the kole crops comprising of cauliflower and cabbage. Fences 1 meter high exclude 80% of flying female cabbage flies, that is Dahlia radica. Height of the fences is critical and is limited by cost and resistance to wind. If vegetable crops are strategically segregated by fences and properly rotated, the effectiveness of exclusion fences improves over time, partly because the fence congregates natural enemies of anthomid adults. One drawback of fencing is that Excluding individuals that are good flyers can attack a nearby but unprotected crop. Also, individuals that overcome the barrier and are confined within the enclosed area may damage the fenced crop. Organic mulch Organic mulch or mulch is a layer of material applied to the surface of an area of soil. Straw mulch indirectly affects the Colorado potato beetle populations and significantly reduces damage by favoring several species of its egg and larval predators. Straw mulch is agronomically and environmentally sound and can be useful as part of an insecticide resistance management program. Mulch is from artificial materials. So mulch could be organic or it could be from artificial materials. Various protective materials such as paper, plastic sheets or aluminized films can be used for mulching. The primary objective of mulching is to improve productivity and reach harvest at an early date. It is usually used for high value crops because if you are using this artificial material as mulch, it itself is a costly affair. So if the crops are not of a high value, uh, definitely because we are always concerned with the economy, it won't be of any use. Mulches from artificial materials can be designed for pest control. For example, plastic materials can be of such color as to modify the spectrum of incident light to alter a given insect behavior. Thrips are attracted to blue, black and white and efforts to yellow and blue. Eliminized materials can attract some insect species while repelling others. So such materials can be useful in attracting and avoiding or repelling insects. Particle films. Road dust drifting on crops can have a negative effect on natural enemies. Pearzyla, Cacoxella, Pyricola, adults confined on a treated, uh, that is hydrophobic particle film surface become coated with tiny particles that interfere with visual cues. Adult behavior is disrupted to the point where they are unable to feed. Hydrophobic particle film also deters feeding and oviposition of has been observed in citrus root weevil. So these films therefore acting and have a negative effect on natural animals. Inert dusts. There are many kinds of inert dusts like the lime, common salt, sand, kaolin, paddy husk ash, wood ash, clays, uh, diatomaceous earths, synthetic and precipitated silicates, silica aerogels and so on and so forth 
and because of their low mammalian toxicity they are used to protect stored grain against a number of coleopteran pests inert dust exert their effects slowly through several mechanisms that result in dehydration notably by adsorption of cuticular lipids and less importantly by abrasion so when inert dusts are employed uh, in uh, storehouses they protect these uh, stored grains uh, from the attack specifically of the coleopteran pest uh, especially because uh, they have the characteristic feature which is because of the adsorption process they dehyd dehydrate the insect and sometimes also the cuticular lipids are adsorbed so which results in the death of the insect and they act as a controlling agent oils mineral oils have been used and no resistance has been reported although oils act primarily at contact sites by obstruction of the respiratory system that is hypoxia they may also act as an oviposition repellent Several arthropod taxa are affected, like the scale insects, the mealy bugs, the xylids, the aphids, the leaf hoppers, and sometimes the lepidopteran pests such as eggs of codling moths. So, when oils are applied, uh, definitely the, there is obstruction of the respiratory system because insects have a tracheal system of respiration which opens outside through an opening which is termed as the spiracles. Now, these spiracles are opening of the respiratory system. Uh, when the insects are immersed in oil, uh, the spiracles are blocked and therefore there is hypoxia or the respiratory system is obstructed. The uh, exchange of gases doesn't take, cannot take place. But it, these oils, if applied on grains, there is ovipositional repellency that means the insects are not able to lay their eggs specifically those insects which lay their eggs on the grains so they are unable to lay their eggs because the eggs have to be uh, stuck to the grains and if the surface is oily uh, they are not able to lay their eggs so they act as oviposition repellent and hence safeguard the grains from the attack of insects surfactants and soaps Surfactants may have direct or indirect effects on soft-bodied arthropods. Owing to their surfactant properties, they work as soaps, presumably allowing interaction of water with arthropod cuticles and causing drowning by permitting water to infiltrate trachea or peritremes. They also may impair nerve cell functions. Soaps have been used to kill soft-bodied insects and their mode of action and low residual activity resemble those of surfactants. So, uh, sometimes uh, uh, emerging the insects and employing soap, waters uh, and surfactants also kills the insect. Uh, the reason may be uh, the blocking of the trachea and or impairing the nerve cell functions. They have an effect and they bring about the kill of the insects. Thank you. So this is part one. I would be continuing um, on the other methods in the next presentation that is part two.